is in good health and happiness regardless of our situation in the world as i always say beloved and friends jesus self himself says lo i'm with you always i will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world isn't that awesome isn't that great isn't that mighty isn't that majestic that god himself promised to be with us in every situation in every circumstance in every trial, in every testing, in every storm, in every decision making, he said in his words, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee and no plague shall come. Now, everybody, welcome tonight. Let's give a big hand. God bless you richly, sincerely from my heart. I release a blessing upon your life tonight. I pray tonight that, oh Father, that you dip me in the river of liquid fire of the Holy Spirit. Anoint mortal man of clay, heal my body from every virus. <laughs> Every sickness, every germs, every disease, every infirmities, every evil, and every work of darkness. As I minister your words tonight, your words will go forth with dunamis and power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That many will be healed, many will be saved, many will be blessed, many will be delivered, many will be set free from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and every work of darkness. Give me strength today, oh, tonight, oh God, to complete this uh, part four message on the, the 2030 end time message in Jesus' name. Beloved and friends, scholars have long argued the time frame between, many scholars have argued the time frame between, between 29 CE and 33 CE as a time of the crucifixion and resurrection of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. But, uh, but, but for long time we lack witness uh, detailing exactly when his death occurred the best we could do was an educated guess most scholars uh, argue that 30 EC makes the most sense uh, they may be more right uh, than they realize because we're going to present evidence tonight uh, that they did not likely consider that really a uh, solidified 30 CE as the year of his death and resurrection. Yes, uh, as a resurrection, logically, it is ancient Jewish writing. We can find several witnesses all are agreeing to the exact year the Messiah did die. We read in Jerusalem to build 40 years before the destruction of the temple the western light went out the chrisms tread remain crimson and a lot of the lord always come up in the left hand they will chew close the gate of the temple by night and get up in the morning find them wide open yes beloved a similar passage in babylonian Tumla states our rabbi yes is taught during the last 40 years before the destruction of the temple the Lord did not come up in the right hand, nor did the, the circum, the, the Christian color strap become white, nor did the westernmost light shine at the doors of the hakel will be opened by themselves. Beloved and friends, so what does this actually mean tonight? This is referring to a practice on the day of atonement in which the high priest was to present two goats before the Lord. He will then cast lots over the goats to determining which will be offered to the Lord and which will be led into the wilderness as a scapegoat. The scapegoat on which the Lord, Lord fell was offered as a sin offering. There was equal chance for the Lord of the Lord to appear in the right hand. However, beginning in 30 C, according to traditional Jewish writings, beloved and friends, for 40 years period of destruction of the temple, the Lord for the Lord only appeared in his left hand. Yes, beloved, the odds of this happening <coughs> are just over one in one trillion. I can you imagine that uh, as you can expect, uh, except uh, statistically, this is basically impossible. <coughs> 
This, of course, absolutely dumbfounded the priesthood and was the subject of much discussion. This was such a big deal that it was documented in multiplied ways. The only thing that they knew was that, this, that something was seriously different in the Day of Atonement sacrifices. Something very profound happening in 30 C in the book of Hebrews, which focus on the Day of Atonement sacrifices. We learn that it is that is that the messiah accomplished on the cross uh, that was causing all of these strange events to occur thus as we can likely guess uh, already it was 30 ce that the messiah died on the cross uh, but there's more as two or three witnesses establish a matter we want to bring uh, several witnesses to the table as it relates uh, to 30 ce the next miracle which the ancient jewish authorities acknowledged was that the temple doors swung open every night of their own accord for 40 years this was the case beginning in the 30s CE yes beloved leading Jewish authority of that time Jonas Ben Ezekiel yes declared that this was a sign of impending doom and that the temple itself will be destroyed yes beloved and friends of Jerusalem Tumbel state said uh, Rabon Jonah Ben Ziki is to the temple, O oh, temple, why? Why do you frighten us? We know that we will end up destroyed, for it has been said, Open your doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour you, your cedar. Jo Jordan ben Saki was the leader of the Jewish community during the time following the destruction of the temple in 70 CE when the Jewish government was transferred to Jimea, was 30 miles west of Jerusalem. Beloved and friends, the next miracle was that the most important lamp of the seven candlestick monarch in the temple went out and will not shine every every night for 40 years over 12 12 to 500 nights in a row the main lamps of the temple stand stood the mourner went out on his own accord no matter what attempts and prediction the priest took to safeguard it against the event beloved and friends Ernest Martin state in fact we are told that the tumor that at uh, that dust the lamps that were unlit in the daytime the middle four lamps remain unlit while the two western lamps normally stayed lit during the day were to retail from the flames of the western lamp which was the lamp that was supposed to stay lit all time it was like the eternal flame that we see today in some um, national mo monuments. Uh, this western lamp was to be lit uh, at all times for that season. Yes, the uh, priests keep extract, uh, yes, uh, reservers of olive oil and other implements to ready to supply, make, uh, make the western lamp under all circumstances uh, would stay lit. Uh, but uh, what happened in the 40 years from the very year the Messiah Jesus said uh, the physical temple will be destroyed every night for 40 years the western lamp went out and this is in spite of the priests every evening preparing it in a special way the western lamp so it is will remain constantly burning all night again beloved the odds against the lamp continue going out all astrological sometimes out of the ordinary was going on yes this was going on the light of the monarch presenting con contact with God his spirit and his presence was now removed this beloved special demonstration accord starting with the crucifixion of the Messiah Jesus Christ and now for the most interesting documented event written in Jewish history noted to be from 30 CE Messiah's death to 70 CE beloved and friends the destruction of the temple the destruction of the temple and it has for the big total 
for 40 years before the destruction of the temple the thread of scarlet never never turned white but it remained red hallelujah lastly beloved this miracle concerned the circumcision striped strip of boat tied tied to azel goat a portion of this red cloth was also removed from the goat and tied to the temple door each each year the red cloth on the temple door turned white as if, as if significant and the atonement of another day of atonement was acceptable to the Lord. This annual event happened until CE 30 CE, and the cloth then remained crimson each year in the time of the temple destruction. This undumbfounded caused much stir and dismay among the Jews. This traditional practice is linked to Israel confessing its sins and ceremonially placing this nation's sin upon the, the Azel good. Yes, beloved with the sin was the removal by this good goods that sin which was represented by the red color of the cloth beloved and friends the color of the blood cloth remain crimson that is Israel's sin were not being pardoned and made white white as God told Israel through, through Isaiah the prophet Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 clearly says come now let us reason together say it the Lord though your sins are like scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they are red like crimson they shall be become like wool beloved and friends a clear indication is that the whole community had lost the Lord's attention in relation to the something that occurred on third CE. The only thing that makes sense, whatever, is the year of the Messiah's death after 30 CE, according to multiple witnesses and accounts. Beloved and friends, the crimson thread never turned white again for 40 years, eventually leading to the destruction of the temple and this cessation of the temple rituals. My friends, beloved, that happened in 30 CE to merit some such a change at the tournament by some accounts on April the 4th, CE, beloved and friends, the 14th of the first hybrid month, the day of the Passover sacrifice, our Messiah, the Lord Jesus, offered himself as a sacrifice for sin. Because of this event, there was a transference of the atonement now no longer achieved through the two goods or offered on the day of atonement, like an innocent Passover lamb. Beloved and friends, the Messiah was put to death, although no fault was found in him. That Jesus Christ, unlike, unlike temple sacrifices or the day of atonement events, as already detailed, where sin is no longer covered over a, temp a time, the Messiah, this Messianic sacrifice is covered for all time. Beloved and friends, the me mechanism providing forgiveness of sin through the day of atonement clearly changed in 30 CE. Here's an interesting coloring point regarding 40 years from the death and resurrection of the Messiah Jesus Christ and the destruction of the temple in 70 CE the events leading up to the destruction of the temple in 70 CE are often noted to rhyme with many portraits and time events these events beloved are seen as a template for the coming greater tribulation judgment and return of our Messiah and the Lord and Savior notice how once the Jubilee principle is perfect fit there will be 40 Jubilees or 2,000 years between death, death and resurrection of our Messiah on Passover and the end times beloved and friends and his return so if the Messiah died on 30 CE which clearly appears to be the seas based on several witnesses and historical confirmations establishing the matter that we have an amazing opportunity placed in front of us we are now equipped and enabled and able to add two days or two thousand years beloved to 30 C and arrive at 2030 as the year of the messiah return this may place the abomination of desolation to be an early 2027 beloved and friends we need to understand the victory prophecy the victory
victory prophecy just before our Messiah Jesus Christ mentioned the day and hour that no one knows. He made it clear that we will not at least know the season. Be Matthew chapter 24 verses 32 to 35 clearly tells us from the victory Lord its lesson as soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves you know that the summer is near so also when when you see all these things you know that he is there at the end very gates truly beloved i say to you this this generation will not pass away until all these things take place heaven and earth will pass away but my word said the lord will not pass away that uh, what does this mean beloved uh, the obvious interpretation is that when we see such signs uh, and events uh, that were mentioned in previous verses uh, that the Messiah return is near at the very gates however tonight as should be clearly evident uh, by now limiting ourselves uh, to the only obvious interpretation is a serious handicap uh, to proper understanding tonight of uh, the messianic prophecy especially messianic timing as we have done dozens of times already we just need to crack the code tonight if you will will and we when you do just that guess what we find is beloved give us give us the same prophetic messianic timeline that we see over and over in the biblical in the bible biblical scholars have long understand the fig tree by the methodologically connected to israel the level the leaf of the fig tree are what Adam and Eve tried to use to cover their skin and the fig tree is the only tree that God ever cursed which represent the Jew, Jewish Pharisees Jeremiah clearly tells us tells us that the fig tree represent Israel without fruits perhaps beloved most importantly tonight a mention of the fig tree being early in bloom in Matthew chapter 24 is also very similar to the same connection made by the prophet Hosea the prophet Hosea says Hosea chapter 9 verses 10 clearly tells us like grapes in in the wilderness I found Israel like the first fruit the first fruit on the fig tree in his first lesson i saw your father's israel yes your father israel become a nation with land again in 1948 but still lack jerusalem as a capital according to the bible jerusalem is where the lord please hallelujah his name second beloved kings chapter 21 and verses 7 7 hallelujah and the cock crave image of ashura he that it made he set on the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon this son his son in this house and in Jerusalem which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel he says I will put my name forever then on on the 23rd of January 1950 the Israeli uh, uh, proclaimed Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and began moving government offices into the city causing fig tree branches to now be tendered and putting the leaves so in 1950 it is the start how long is a generation ironically in Psalms chapter Psalms 90 the same the same chapter we read already in the presentation that demonstrate the concept of a day as a thousand years we are also given a very interesting verse Psalm Psalm 90 verses 10 clearly tells us the year of our life are 70 yes beloved or even by the reason of strength 80 yet yet their span is but told trouble told trouble they are soon gone and we fly away yes beloved and friends so we simply do the matter 1950 plus 80 equals 2030 2030 and then we we fly away isn't that so beloved and friends i'll give you figures tonight the eight day the eight day beloved hallelujah let's give a lot of big hands tonight for that so what happens after this beloved and friends this seven thousand years or seven 
even the plan of man that God has for us. There is not a lot of detail of what occurs following the new heaven and the new earth. Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter 21 verse 22 affords us some detail and mirrors a similar language to find in the prophets. There are some patterns given to us that help for the established overall timing. The overall timing, circumcision, prophecy, hallelujah. Have you ever asked why circumcision is to be on the eighth day? Leviticus uh, chapter 12 verses 1 through 5 uh, clearly tells us the Lord spoke to Moses and saying, speak uh, to the people of Israel, saying, if, uh, if a woman conceive and bears a male child, then she shall be unclean. Seven days as, uh, as at the time of the ministration, she shall be unclean and on the eighth day on the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised then shall she continue for 33 days 33 days in the blood of her purifying she shall not touch anything holy or, or nor come unto the sanctuary until the day of her purifying are complete but if she bears a female child then she shall be unclean for two weeks and in her ministration and she shall continue to be in the blood of her purifying for 66 days. Yes, here's an interesting connection to the consider with a male child being born. A male child being born, a woman is unclean for seven days plus 33 days for a total of 40 days with a female child being born being born a woman is unclean for 14 days plus 66 days yes for a total of 80 days if we were to add the 40 days and the 80 days together it will equal 120 days of uncleanness until the time of purification is complete as should be understood by now beloved and friends the connection to 120 is important important tonight uh, using the jubilee principle 50 50 times 120 biblical years equals 6,000 years. It is biblical years 6,000 or the seven, the seven day in which our time of purification is complete. Also, beloved, recall that the seventh day is, is the same as the third day. Beloved and friends, the seventh day is the seventh day from creation and the third day is the third day from the death and resurrection of our Messiah. Messiah, beloved and friends, number chapter 19, verses 12, clearly tells us he shall cleanse himself with the water on the third day and on the seventh day, praise God, and so be on be clean. But if he does not cleanse himself on the third day or on the seventh day, he will not become clean. Likewise, beloved and friends, we will be cleansed by the resurrection of the on the third and seventh day. That is when our our time of purification is complete which also happens to be the 120th jubilee yes my friends and beloved or the biblical year 6000 so what does the mention of circumcision here have to do with this prophetic timing beloved and friends in the midst in the midst of 40 days on the eighth day the male child is circumcised circumcision is a reference to the sign of the covenant given to abraham often in scripture as already revealed Revealed in this teaching, yes, is seven is methodologically related to the seven thousand year plan. God has for man if the seven here relates to the seven thousand years and that somehow relates to the covenant of Abraham. It's therefore anything here to suggest that numerically, well, watch this, this beloved tonight takes the seven thousand years and divided by 40 days of uncleanness. Seven thousand divided by 40 equals 175. How long did Abraham live? You guess, my friends, in Genesis chapter 25, verses seven. Seven, these are the days of the years of Abraham life. Beloved and friends, 175 years. Circumcision physically represent the cutting away and discarding of our flesh 
and spiritually represent the cutting of our hearts or circumcision of our heart and having a heart to only follow God. That, beloved, is what is meant by a circumcised heart. Ezekiel chapter 36 clearly tells us in verses 26 and 27, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Yes, beloved and friends, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and, and be careful to obey my rules. Yes, beloved and friends, at the end of 7,000 years, both resurrection will have accord. We will enter into the last great day, the eighth day, beloved and friends, the result of both resurrection will cause us to have discarded our bodies of flesh and we will have our glorified bodies the result being that we will have only desire or new heart to follow God <coughs> for all of eternity on the eighth day following both resurrection at the beginning and end of the seventh day all will be 100% God's hallelujah exodus hallelujah chapter 22 verse 30 clearly tells us tonight and ye shall do the same with the oxen and with your sheep seven days it shall be with his mother on the eighth day you shall give it to me praise the lord that leads us into into the the sukkot prophecy the, the sukkot prophecy the, the sukkot prophecy sukkot Cloak prophecy is falling feast that can be found in Leviticus chapter 23. It's also called tabernacles in the first time. So cloak is mentioned in scripture, is found in Genesis, Genesis chapter 33, verses 70 clearly tells us but Jacob journeyed to, to Suvok and built himself a house and made boats for his livestock. Therefore, therefore, the name of the place is called Suklot after blowing seven times in verse 3 and leaving Isa behind in verse 17 Jacob Jacob arrived to a place he named Sukkot the mention of the seven of those connected with Sukkot there is also a mention of it that is also connected with Sukkot Leviticus chapter 23 verses 40 to 42 clearly tells us on the 15th day of the seventh month when we have gathered all the produce of the land you shall celebrate the feast of the Lord seven days on the first day shall be a solemn rest and on the eighth day shall be a solemn rest hallelujah and you shall take up on the first day the fruit of the splendid trees branches of palm tree and broads of leaves yes and willows of brooks and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days yes you shall celebrate it as a feast of the Lord for seven days in the year it is a statue forever throughout your generations ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month yes one of the things that god mentions at the purpose of Sukkot, yes is to remind us when israel dwell in boots after coming out of egypt leviticus chapter 23 verses 42 and 43 tells us tonight that ye shall dwell in boots for seven days all naive israel shall dwell in boots that your generation may know that i've made the people of israel dwell in boots when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God, which is interesting because the first place they stop is at the Sukkot. Yes, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 37, and the people of Israel journey from Ramas to Sukkot, about 600,000 600, men on foot, besides women and children. So when we dwell in Boots, by Sukkot, we are the reminder of the willingness when God took his people out of Egypt, beloved, and brought them into temporary 
dwellings in the wilderness. Suk Suk plot is mentioned in our, in our Messiah as well as John chapter 7, verse 37 and 38. It clearly tells us on the last day of the feast, the great day, meaning the eighth day, Jesus himself stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whosoever believe it in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Messiah may have been given more understanding of Isaiah chapter 50, 55, chapter 55 verses 1 to 2 clearly tells us, come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters and he who has no money, come, come buy and eat, come, come buy wine and milk without money, isn't that awesome, without price. But uh, here's what uh, rather interesting, specifically, beloved, on the eighth day, the Messiah mentions living waters. This uh, commands attention to the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 14. Yes, verses 7 through 8 tells us, and they shall be a unique day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time there shall be light. Light on that day, living water shall flow out from Jerusalem, half of them to the eastern sea. Hallelujah. And half of them to the western sea. It shall continue in summer as in winter yes in the context of the new Jerusalem we also read Revelation Revelation chapter 22 and verses 1 and 2 then the angel showed me the river of the water of life bring bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruits each month. Beloved and friends, the leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations. So long, no longer will there be anything a curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on the foreheads. Hallelujah, night will be no more day will need no light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever and ever most believe the New Testament Jerusalem will arrive after the Messiah reigns for 1,000 years referring back to the creation <coughs> prophecy there are six days and the seventh day is a rest. Recall that one day is a thousand years principle. Here there will be six thousand years of man and then on the seventh day the Messiah arrives and we rest and reign with him for one thousand years or one day specifically. The Sabbath day, beloved and friends, the day of our Lord after the seventh day. Thus, uh, technically, the eighth day, beloved, the new Jerusalem will arrive. It was not likely an accident that Messiah mentioned the living waters on the eighth day of the Su Sukkar, as we are likewise presented the living water from the new Jerusalem on the eighth day. This is why the feast of Sukkot, Sukkot groups of the seventh day together, and then mysteriously mentioned another eighth day in the last great day. In addition, the new Jerusalem arrives just before the old order and old heaven pass away and we are presented with a new heaven and a new order. It's possible that the new Jerusalem is a type of Noah's Ark after all resurrection at the end of the seventh day. Entering the eighth day, we enter the new Jerusalem. God's word goes forth. And this show heaven and earth is a consuming fire and a new heaven and a new earth follows leading beloved us into eternity. Yes, the flood was a baptism of cleansing by water and the end of it is a baptism of cleansing by fire. Noah's ark points to this in several ways. 
for example there were eight people on the ark and the rains began after the seventh day thus thus the eighth day thus beloved Sukkot also reminds us that this life on this earth is temporary dwelling dwelling just as the biblical holiday of Sukkot teaches to live in temporary dwellings of tents for seven days we too live on this earth for seven thousand years in this in this earth our current vision of, of any way is our temporary dwelling on the eighth day called the last great day in the context of Sukkot, we will see the new earth and the new heaven and permanent dwelling restoring beloved us all the way back to the beginning as the end is revealed in the beginning beloved the whole point of the end is to return back to the garden back back to the beginning back to the beginning our bodies also also temporary Paul brilliantly refers to our temporary bodies as a tent man will have lived in flesh our tent for for seven thousand years but the eight day boat resurrection will have occurred and the house not made with hands our resurrected body will be our new eternal home hallelujah second corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 for for we know not uh, that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed we have a building from God a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens hallelujah it should be also noted that all agricultural harvest will have occurred by then the barley harvest the wheat harvest and the grape harvest that is the purpose of sukkot the sukkoti sukkot the feast of the complete the harvest there is a prophetic implication to consider here as well that the messiah was referred to the first fruits <coughs> of the harvest which is the barley, the barley harvest uh, first corinthians chapter 15 verse 20 tells us in fact uh, christ has been raised from the dead uh, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep uh, beloved and friends uh, there is also the wheat harvest uh, which is us uh, in the faith uh, the great harvest are the rebellious uh, Revelation chapter 14 verses 17 to 20 tells us and then another angel came out of the temple in heaven and he too had a sharp sickle and another angel came out from the altar and the angel who had authority over the fire and he called with a loud voice to the one who had a sharp sickle yes he says put in your sickle and gather the clusters from the vine of the earth for its grapes are ripe so the angel swung his sickle across the earth and gather the grapes the grape harvest of the earth and threw it into the great wine press of the wrath of god hallelujah and the wine press was trodden outside the city and blood flowed from the wine press as high as a horse bridle for 1600 yes uh, sada succlot following the the completion of all harvest uh, and it's also a feast uh, a feast of the harvest uh, of the it's supposed it proposed uh, that succlot uh, will be the turning of the wedding supper of the lamb in revelation chapter 19 verses 6 uh, through 10 tells us uh, and i heard that seems to be a voice of great multitude like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder crying out hallelujah hallelujah for the lord our god the almighty reigns let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready for your for it was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen bright and pure for the fine linen is the righteous deed of the saints beloved and friends and angels said to me right right 
this blessed blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb and he says to me these these are the true words of god almighty so the reason that the marriage supper of the lamb is speculated to be at the succot is because all of the harvests have been completed it is also found at the, the, the last final feast another interesting connection is found in the timeline of the first temple dedication the temple was dedicated on the eighth day of sukrut yes a course second corinthians verses 8 to 10 tells us so so solomon observed the feast at a time for the seven days and all israel with him yes a very great assemble who came from the entrance of the Hamata to, to book to the brook of Egypt on the eighth day they held a solemn assembly for the dedication of the altar and they observed seven days and the feast seven days then on the 23rd day of of the seventh month he sent the people to their tents rejoicing and happy of hearts because of the goodness that the Lord has shown to David and to Solomon and to his people Israel. Likewise, also it appears similar to the New Testament in New Jerusalem in which the temple of the Lord, the Almighty and the Lamb, Revelation chapter 21 verses 22 and, and I saw no temple in the city for its temple is the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb. Lastly, beloved, after after the great tribulation ends, the Antichrist is defeated and we enter into the thousand years, re reigning with our Messiah. And guess what? All nations will be observing Sukrut. Yes, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 tells us, and then everyone who survives all the nation that have done against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the king. Yes, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of the boots. Yes, beloved and friends, in conclusion, tonight of all that I've seen so far, the best illustration of the whole Messiah timeline is a temple Mo, Momar which itself is including every time pattern we have seen over and over in this teaching in this teaching and now should be easy for to see once you see it tonight beloved you cannot unsee it it has been always been hidden in plain sight hallelujah in plain sight the men ura prophecy the menorah prophecy the pattern of the menorah is a summary of the whole messianic timeline it teaches every critical messianic time time stamp for the whole plan of mankind the menorah is described to be the light of the tabernacle and it was to always stay lit it was to always provide light Exodus chapter 27 verses 20 King James Version tells us hallelujah and you shall command the children of Israel <coughs> that they shall bring <coughs> you pure oil of press olives for the light of course for the lamp to burn continually the menorah was to also be constructed in a very specific pattern and was so known to Moses in Exodus chapter 25 verses 31 clearly tells us to 40 hallelujah let me drink some water hallelujah praise God thank you Jesus God give me strength God give me strength tonight to complete this important, most important message in my ministry as a prophet. The final message and the most important message. I, I, will, I will say something tonight. If the rapture takes place after this, I've known I've completed my job. And tonight, beloved, the most important thing, Moses in Exodus chapter 25, verse 31 through 40 tells us, and it clearly states <clears throat> you shall make a lampstand of pure gold and the lampstand shall be made of hammer work its base its, uh, its stem its copper its uh, silex and its flowers shall shall be of one piece and it in with it and there shall be six branches going out of the sides three branches of the lampstand out of one side 
of it and these branches of the lamb stand out of the other side of it the three cups made like almond bosom each with six to the floor of the branch and three cups made like almond blossom each with it the four on the other branch so for the six branches going out of the lampstand and on the lampstand itself there shall be four cups made with almond blossom and their silex and the flowers and the silex of the pieces of is under each pair of the six branches going out from the lampstand. There, there shall be the branches shall be one piece with the whole of it. Yes, a single piece of hammer work of pure gold. You shall make seven lamps. For it and the lamp shall be set up so as to give light to the space in front of it. It stones and the rays shall be pure gold. It shall be made with all these utensils out of a talent of pure gold. And see that you make them after the pattern of them which is being shown on the, the mountain hallelujah our messiah describe himself uh, beloved and friends as a light uh, john chapter 8 verses 12 again tells us uh, jesus spoke to them saying i am the light uh, of the world whosoever follows me will not walk in darkness uh, but will have the light of life uh, more more specifically tonight uh, our messiah jesus christ is a lamp uh, the menu Monora Revelation chapter 21 verse 23 to 24 clearly states and the city has no need of the sun nor moon to shine it for the glory of God gives its light and its lamp it's a lamp by its light will the nation walk and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it and its gates will never be shut for day and day will be no night there does uh, the pattern of the messiah is also the pattern of the menorah and now for the messianic uh, timeline <laughs> in the menorah prophecy beloved and friends uh, when you see there is a re re recreation of the menorah yes by the temple instituted of the israel there are six branches and one lampstand the branches surround the lamps uh, which point off to the Messiah being the centerpiece of the seventh day. Notice also that the lampstand is a foot lamp from either the left or the right. If you recall from either in the teaching, the Messiah arrives at the end of the fourth day, died and resurrected at the beginning of, of the fifth day. And it's the return of the beginning of the seventh day. Thus, the two time stamp of the two comings of the Messiah are numerically represented. As we can see, the lampstand itself represents the Messiah, just as we saw in Revelation chapter 21. The lampstand also contains the whole in pattern, the pattern of the messianic prophecy. This is where it becomes absolutely fascinating, and this uh, messianic timeline pattern is particularly serve very well as summarizing and concluding everything we have learned so far. This lampstand itself itself represents since the whole messianic timeline. It starts at the base and works itself up leading to the lamp or light itself which represent beloved the messiah scope of this timeline is the beginning to eternity from day one yes beloved today it remember remember tonight the menorah pattern is the messianic pattern the pattern exists for a reason and it's not just random tonight uh, to begin we need to bring the overall timeline that was the focus of this whole teaching tonight uh, when we are going to do this it takes the lampstand and set it on the side parallel yes uh, to the whole messianic timeline and pattern tonight beloved some way some may already see the pattern we have wanted to make this easy for everyone we'll start at the bottom at the layer each piece into the messianic timeline start is represented by a copper silex and a full flow of, of we have three more silex and a total of four elixirs 
Calyx represent the first four days before the Messiah resurrection at this first coming. Next, we have two cups and the cups, Calyx and the flowers, just as a cup, Calyx and the, the, the floor represent the start here is represent the end yes beloved highlight the messianic seven day that begins and ends with a resurrection the three cups represent the distance between the resurrection of the messiah and the last or final resurrection in the end lastly tonight we have the lamp yes the lamp connects directly to the new jerusalem in which the lamb the lamp the messiah is said to be the lamp and it is to be our eternal light this light is continuing just just like the menorah it represents tonight eternity itself beloved and friends it has no end thus if the lamp is torn upright once again it is now easy to see the messianic pattern before we see the the flower clerex and cup to represent the start we see that the four clerex that represent the four days we see that the three cups that present the three prophetic days of the messiah that includes the resurrection unto life we see that the flower the clerex and the cup yes beloved represent the end we we see that the lamp that connects back to the Messiah and the eternal light and life on the eighth day. Hallelujah. John chapter 8 verses 12 clearly tells us again. Jesus spoke to them saying, he said, I am the light of the world. Whosoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but I will have the light of life. Hallelujah. The, the monora inhabits and exhibits the same messianic prophecy timeline that has been the context threat of this teaching beloved it concludes the presentation of dozens of prophecies and patterns demonstrating how the messiah was to come and did come to fulfill messianic prophecy in biblical year 4000 or 30 ce and now the same prophecies and patterns suggest a return of messiah and biblical year 6000 or 2030 ce while we cannot know these things for certain we should always be watching and always be ready god has a history of telling his people that we should do and when before he does anything important so we should also be constantly praying and listening listening and praying hallelujah leave, leave this hallelujah praise the lord urgently share hallelujah in all the faith we encourage i encourage you tonight uh, to recklessly a time be short and perhaps uh, notice that the things that are moving quickly to join hallelujah praise the lord thank you jesus my, my tonight the 2030 please visit hallelujah the 2030 timeline tonight is very important is very important for me to know what is coming very soon and tonight my friends i the bible tells us no one know the day nor the hour when the lord will put in his appearance but what i've tell you tonight is i have nothing to tell you that i do not set a date for the rapture but what i'm telling you that the this Dispensation, what I've preached for hours in four session, I gave everyone a breakdown for the timing of 2030 that will complete the dispensation of 6,000 years and we know what will happen after the 6,000 years beloved and friends we are in 2023 we have seven and a half years to reach 2030 yes in within within seven and a half years four things will have to happen yes beloved according to the word of god according to the scriptures first thing first the rapture have to take place the bible tells us no one knows the day nor the hour nor the time not even the son of man when the rapture will take place but we all know it will be very soon secondly we know that the world will plunge into the new world order one world government one world currency and we see the digital currency that china has bring out and now america will go into that also very soon 
without the, without that there will be no reign and rule and reign of the antichrist because with the antichrist rule and reign he says in the scripture and revelation no one will be able to buy or sell unless they receive the mark of the beast 666 so that is important so they will invade your privacy very soon beloved and friends if you are not safe tonight i want to encourage you to get saved and that your name be written in the Lamb's book of life uh, for the coming back of our Lord is very near because the dispensation of 6,000 years will close at 2030 and four things will happen. The rapture has to take place. The Antichrist has to rule for seven years and during that we have the third world war at the end of 2030, the battle of Armageddon and we have to have the, the return of Jesus Christ and then the starting of the millennium, the new the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ when the saints will return with Jesus in the clouds he has to come back and rule and reign for a thousand years which we call the millennium period I've preached everything I've teach everything tonight so you have an understanding don't get me wrong tonight I haven't set a date for the rapture but based on the timeline I know and we can know what will happen very soon God bless you richly it has been a great joy and privilege for this prophet to reveal the truths tonight of what is happening in our world and the timeline of the world what to expect in Jesus precious and gracious and wonderful name God bless you richly it has been a great joy and privilege once again this Sunday night to wrap up the session of the 2013 timeline in Jesus precious and gracious and wonderful name amen and amen thank you Jesus